So let's go to the next topic today, theories of catalysis. Two theories were proposed for uh, the process of catalysis. We know what the process of catalysis is. We've done in the previous class that catalysis is the process by which a foreign substance, which is known as a catalyst, it increases the rate of reaction. That is what catalysis is. Now there were two theories which were given to explain the process of catalysis. The first theory that was known as the intermediate compound formation theory. Intermediate compound formation theory. Now this theory it gives us an explanation about homogeneous catalysis. We know what homogeneous catalysis is in which the reactant products and the catalyst they all are in the same phase and an example which we had taken that was the oxidation of sulfur dioxide in presence of nitric oxide as a catalyst to give us sulfur trioxide. So in this case this is a gas, this is also gas and the catalyst and the products they are also gases. Now this theory it was given by Clement. Clement was the scientist who proposed this theory and according to this theory it is said that the catalyst it forms an intermediate compound with the help of or with combining with reactants. So catalyst plus the reactant that gives us an intermediate compound, right? Now this intermediate compound that is very very unstable. We know that adsorption is going to occur over here, okay? And we know that during adsorption energy that is going to be released, the energy which is released that is a little, uh, you can say, uh, it tries to compensate to the activation energy which is required for the reactants to go to the products. Okay. So the adsorption theory says that whenever a catalyst it is adsorbed on the reactant or vice versa, a reactant is adsorbed on the surface of the catalyst, in that case energy is released. That energy released is compensating the energy of the activation which is required to convert the reactants to the products. Okay. So in the first step, the catalyst it is reacting with the reactant or adsorbing on the reactant to give us an intermediate and this intermediate it is unstable it will immediately break down to give us the products and the catalyst it is regenerated okay so let's just take an example we say that if we are doing a reaction a plus B in presence of a catalyst K to give us the product AB. Okay, so now according to this theory, one of the reactants in the first step that is going to react with the catalyst to form an unstable intermediate Okay? And then in the second step, this intermediate AK, it is going to react with the second reactant to give us the product and the catalyst K that is regenerated. Now in these two steps, it is seen that the first step is the slow step and the second step is the fast step. Right? So as a result of which, if you are looking at kinetics of the reaction, the rate of the reaction that is given by the slower step, so rate of this particular reaction it is given as K into concentration of A into the concentration of the catalyst. So this is how the rate of the reaction that is going to be given. Many reactions they are explained on the basis of this theory, like for example, if we are taking a reaction between nitrogen oxide and oxygen right 
So we are taking this reaction only. The reaction which we've done over here, the catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide. How does this take place in two steps? In the first step, it is seen that nitric oxide, which is behaving as a catalyst in this reaction, it reacts with oxygen to give us an intermediate. which is nitrogen dioxide and in the second step the nitrogen dioxide which is formed as an intermediate over here it reacts with sulfur dioxide to give us sulfur trioxide and the catalyst NO which is regenerated okay so this is again this is going to be the slow step and the second one is the fast step this is the catalyst which is regenerated. So according to the reaction, the rate of the above reaction can be given as K into concentration of NO car square. Right? Oxygen being in an axis supply, it does not affect the rate of the reaction. So the reaction is of second order. Clear? Similarly, we can take another reaction over here in which ALCL3 that is going to be used as a catalyst so let's take a reaction we are taking ALCL3 aluminium chloride as a catalyst this is reacting with methyl chloride now when they react together, they are going to form an unstable intermediate compound. This. Okay. This is going to be an intermediate compound. Then this reacts with, this is the first step of the reaction. In the second step of the reaction, the intermediate compound that can react with benzene so we have C6H6 plus CH3 positive and ALCL4 negative. Okay? This is going to give us what? It is going to give us C6H5 CH3. ALCL3, it will be regenerated and HCl will also be liberated. So we have this as the product, this is also the product and this ALCL3 is the catalyst which is regenerated back. Okay, clear over So this was basically the first theory. Then this theory you can write down. This theory explains, just write down a few pointers. This theory explains why a catalyst remains unchanged why catalyst remains unchanged during the reaction right and as a result of which even small quantities increases the rate of reaction to larger extents. Rate of reaction to larger extent. Right? Although this theory fails to explain the role of promoters which we have previously done. Promoters, they are helpers to increase the activity of the catalyst. Okay? So it fails to explain the role of promoters and the role of poisons. It is not able to, it cannot explain these two factors. Then number three, all those 
Transition elements having variable oxidation states having variable oxidation states are better catalysts. Okay, they are better catalysts. Like for example, we can talk of Fe3 positive, which has another oxidation state of Fe2 positive. So all those which have a variable oxidation state, they behave as better oxidizing agents. Uh, sorry, better catalysts. Okay, the next, the second theory which we are going to do, that is the adsorption theory. Okay, when we are talking of the second theory, which is the adsorption theory, this theory explains heterogeneous catalysis. It explains heterogeneous catalysis. Now, basically, it was suggested before that whenever a catalyst is in the form of a solid whenever the catalyst is in the form of a solid the reactants they are adsorbed on the surface of this solid right so when the reactants they are adsorbed on the surface of the solid they might form temporary bonds okay so we are saying that there might be a temporary bond formation right due to this temporary bond formation what is going to happen the concentration of the reactants increase on the surface as a result of this concentration of reactants increase on the surface thereby increasing the rate of the reaction right we also know that adsorption is an exothermic process the same what we had discussed before because adsorption is an exothermic process therefore the energy which is released that can compensate the activation energy and the reactants can be easily converted into products okay now the failure of this adsorption theory was that it failed to explain the specificity of a reaction. We have studied in the characteristics of catalysts that the catalysts they are highly specific which means that there are certain substances which are able to catalyze one reaction but they may not catalyze the other one. So they are very specific in their uh, selection as a result of which uh, only certain reactions they are catalyzed by some of the elements or some of the compounds. This theory it failed to explain the specificity of a catalyst. Okay. The chemical adsorption is specific the chemical adsorption is specific as a result of which a new theory was formulated which was known as the modern adsorption theory modern adsorption theory there are five points to this theory or five steps to this theory. The first step is the fusion of the reactants on the surface of catalyst. Okay. So if we are saying that this is the catalyst. So in the first step, what is going to happen? And these are the reactants over here. These reactants, they are going to adsorb on the
the surface of the catalyst. ठीक है? Such that it is forming temporary bonds over here. Like this. Okay. Now because the concentration of the reactants that increases on the surface of the catalyst, so there is going to be reaction which is taking place between A and B, as a result of which we get an intermediate of this type. The reaction is complete. Now, in this case, reverse of adsorption is going to take place, which is known as desorption. So, what are we getting over here now? We are regenerating the catalyst like this, and the products they are easily formed. Right. So, first step is the fusion of reactants on the surface of the catalyst, which is we are showing by the first step over here. The second step is some form of association occurs between the reactants. Okay. So, there is going to be some form of association which is occurring. This is the second step. Association between The reactants. Okay. Once there is association which is occurring between the uh, reactants, then in the third step there is an occurrence of chemical reaction. So when we looking over here, there is a chemical reaction which is going to take place, right? And after the chemical reaction has taken place. These option is going to occur, right? So in the fourth step, these option of products right? These option of products occur and in the fifth step, the diffusion of products away from the catalyst to regenerate the catalyst. Diffusion of products away from the catalyst. Right? So this is what is happening in this modern adsorption theory. Let's just see once again. In the first step, diffusion of the reactants that is taking place on the surface of the catalyst. Okay? So this is the diffusion of the catalyst which is happened over here. Then there are certain, because the concentration of the reactants is going to increase on the surface, so there are certain reactions which are going to take place over here. And in the second step, association between the reactants is taking place. So here is the association which is taking place as a result of which you can see that there is a uh, bond formation between A and B. This is the chemical reaction. Then in the fourth, these option is going to take place. That is the products that is going to leave the surface of the catalyst. And finally, diffusion of the products away from the catalyst. Okay. Now, the energy which is supplied for all this, that is the energy which is released due to adsorption. Clear? Okay. Then, okay. after that, in case uh, when we are talking of this, it is said that the catalyst, it basically it is behaving as a surface for reaction of the reactants. What basically happens is, if you are taking a surface and we are trying to absorb the reactants on the surface, those reactants they come closer to each other as a result of which there are certain chemical reactions which are going to take place. Now why do these chemical reactions take place? The idea behind this was or the theory or the reason given behind this was that there are certain free valencies which are present on the surface of the catalyst. You can see over here that these are the free valencies which are present on the surface of the catalyst as a result of which there is a temporary association of the reactants with the catalyst only because of these free valencies. So greater the number of free valencies a catalyst
catalyst will have more uh, capability it has to increase the rate of the reaction okay so let's understand now what are these free valencies going to do okay so what are we saying that in case uh, free valencies that are responsible for catalytic activity it follows that with the increase of these valencies on the surface of a catalyst the catalytic activity will increase that is what i have just told you so in order to increase the free valencies it can be increased by the following two methods free valencies can be increased by the following two methods the first method to increase is subdivision of the catalyst what do we understand by what do we understand by subdivision of the catalyst subdivision of the catalyst means that the valencies increases on disintegration when we are disintegrating or dividing any catalyst into very small parts the free valencies they are going to increase and this process that is known as disintegrating right so that is the reason why a finely powdered substance has more free valencies and it behaves as a more effective it behaves as a more effective catalyst okay so what are we doing by doing, uh, by disintegrating any catalyst is that we are increasing the surface area of the catalyst if we increasing the surface area of the catalyst we have already studied that the activity of a catalyst it depends upon the surface area greater the surface area more area would be provided for the reactants to be adsorbed and hence the catalytic activity that would increase theek hai second hamare paas aa jata hai rough surface of the catalyst rough surface of the catalyst now if there are more grooves or there are you can say more uh, this thing the surface of the catalyst that is rough there will be more exposed free valencies okay due to the uh, number of basically we say that th these grooves or rough surface gives active spots on the surface of the catalyst these active spots increases the free valencies theek hai they increase the free valencies as a result of which the activity of the catalyst that will increase is it clear now the adsorption theory what are the advantages of adsorption theory what all does it explain let's just jot it down the first advantage of the adsorption theory is it explains that the surface of the catalyst the surface of the catalyst is used again and again why because simultaneously adsorption and desorption that is occurring adsorption and desorption is occurring right which means that there are adsorption alternate adsorption and desorption is occurring so once uh, the product is formed that is being desorbed right new reactants they are adsorbed then again products are formed they are desorbed so because of this only a small quantity of catalyst is required very small 
small quantity of the catalyst that is required due to alternate adsorption and desorption. Then number two, the chemical adsorption depends upon chemical adsorption depends upon the nature of the adsorbate and adsorbent because we just studied that the process or the phenomenon of catalysis is the process of adsorption. So therefore, the, cat, uh, the catalyst activity will depend upon the kind of the adsorbent and the adsorbent. So, adsorption theory helps us to understand the specificity of a catalyst. Which means that which we have already spoken about many times that a catalyst it is highly specific in nature. So this theory explains as this. Then number three, the process of desorption leaves the surface of the catalyst unchanged. Okay, leaves the surface unchanged, that is there is no change in the composition of the surface, neither there is any change in the mass of the catalyst, therefore it is said that the catalyst can be regenerated after the completion of the reaction. So this is the third point which this theory explains. Then number four, we have just studied as the process is Adsorption, it releases adsorption energy, right? This energy is released, so this energy compensates for the activation energy. And therefore, it helps in increasing the rate of the reaction. Okay? So it compensates for the activation energy and it helps in understanding the understanding the what? The regeneration of the catalyst again or the uh, enhancement of the reaction. Okay? Number 5, it explains the poisoning of the catalyst. It explains the poisoning of the catalyst. How does it explain the poisoning of the catalyst? Basically what happens is that these poisons, they are preferentially adsorbed. They are not completely adsorbed on the surface of uh, uh, the reactants. They are preferentially adsorbed on the poisons, right? Now as a result of this, what is going to happen is that these poisons, what they are going to do is they are going to decrease the activity of the catalyst, right? We know that we have discussed about two things, one which is the promoters and the other one that is the poisons or the inhibitors, okay? So the promoters, they are going to increase the rate of the reaction, helps to increase the activity of the catalyst and the poisons, they are going to decrease the activity of the catalyst. That decrease in activity is due to an explanation which is given, which is prevention, pre uh, adsorption of the poisons. Of the poisons. Okay. And then last, promoters are responsible for Increasing the rate of the reaction. Okay, we know this already. So, promoters, what do they do? They increase the roughness of the surface. They increase the roughness of the surface. Because of the increase in roughness of the surface, the Free valencies they are going to increase and as a result of which the activity of the catalyst would be increased. Okay? So these are a few uh, advantages of the adsorption theory. 
Now we are time and again using two terms over here. One is activity and the other one is selectivity of a catalyst. What do we understand by these two terms? Activity of a catalyst is the capability of the catalyst to increase the rate of the reaction. Clear? So this is an example of this. 
Then we have another example that is inversion of cane sugar. Hydrolysis of sugar. This reaction also takes place in presence of an acid to give us one molecule of glucose and the other molecule of fructose. Okay. This is our also an example. Now basically when we are looking at the mechanism of these reactions, what, are, what is happening? So let's just understand mechanism of both acid and base catalysis by taking one example each. Okay. Now in this case, we are first taking the example of this in presence of an acid. That is hydrolysis of an ester in presence of an acid. When this is taking place, over here, we have CH3C double bond O, OC2H5. Right? Over here, this has a pi electron cloud. So, this bond can shift over here. This first reacts with an H positive. Because this has now 6 electrons over here, then hydrogen can easily go and attack at this place. Right? Such that we are getting an intermediate over here, CH3. C O H TK and there is a positive charge on this carbon atom. Is it clear? There is a shifting of the pi electron cloud taking place over here, as a result of which there is going to be a positive charge on this. Now this reacts with water. This is the second step which we are doing over here with water. When this reacts with water, water can be written as this. There is a positive charge over here. So this can attack at this point. Okay? Such that what will we have now? CH3COH. Okay? And this will be attacked. Right? And this has one lone pair of electrons. So the positive charge is going to come over here now. Okay? And we have O C2H5. This hydrogen from here, it denuclearizes to this oxygen such that the product which we are going to have over here, the product which we will have over here is CH3 C OH double bond O from here this H positive will be liberated because this was used as a catalyst and we have C2H5 OH plus H positive is regenerated. Okay? See the reaction once again. Over here what we are saying that this is an ester. There are two lone pair of electrons which are present over here. The double bond from here is localized. Because hydrogen has a positive charge, it has no electrons, so this can attack at this position where there is efficiency of electrons. Okay. So this is the compound which is formed because the bond from here has shifted, carbon gets a positive charge, right? So over here again, water it has more electrons, lone pair of electrons on oxygen, it is a rich electron species. It attacks at the positive charge over here. So this is the intermediate which is formed. The hydrogen from here is localized, delocalized to this position. And the H positive because of being a catalyst is regenerated. So the products which we are having over here is CH3COOH plus C2H5OH plus H positive. Okay. Let's take an example of base catalyzed reaction. base catalyzed reaction. In order to take a base catalyzed reaction, we are taking a species NH4NO2. This has to be converted to N2O. This is our reaction. N2O plus H2O. Okay. Now how this, this reaction it is carried out? In this reaction, first reacts with OH negative, right? So OH negative ke saath jab react karta hai, it is going to take from it one hydrogen from this place, 
So we have N H NO2 plus water. Okay. Now this N H NO2 that is going to bear the negative charge now. Right? And in the second step, N H NO2 that reacts with the acetate ion. Basically, we are using acetic acid as the catalyst over here. So, now the CH3 COO negative in presence of OH negative, of course. In the second step, CH3 COO negative that is going to react. So, we have NH. NO2 plus CH3COOH. Yeah, wait, sorry, there was one mistake over here. This is what we are going to get. Okay? So, this NH2 NO2 that is going to have, uh, be converted into NHNO2 plus CH3. O C O O H then this decomposes into sorry O H negative decomposes into O H negative. Okay, so let's see the reaction once again. In the first step we have this. It's reacting with O H negative to give us H two O and N H N O two, right? Then this is going to react with this CH3, this abstracts and proton, a proton from here to give CH3COOH and this then decomposes into N2ONOH. Okay, so this is an example of base catalyzed. We would be doing these examples in many of the organic reactions which we are going to do in organic chemistry. Okay? So for today we will do the